So welcome to the second video on the biophysics playlist and we're slowly making head with the concept of light and also when we say light we mean electromagnetic radiation and it's good to uh, to get to know the terminology because we're going to have to understand it. And basically I'm going to go through the different experiments that that theorize that oh uh, maybe light is a wave or wait a minute maybe light is, light is a particle. So we're going to go through the different experiments the double slit experiment by Thomas Young and the photoelectric effect experiment by Einstein. So let's let's get this show on the road. And what I'd like to start with is the double slit experiment and basically just as a review from the last video waves can have constructive and destructive interferences and that means that if something would show me somehow constructive and destructive interferences I would know it to be a wave. So what we have here basically is we have some sort of screen here some sort of screen that is uh, laid in a room and this room has two slits two slits that you can shine a light through. So essentially this light if I shine it through it would only come out of these two slits. It would only come out of these two slits. So let's see what happens. I'm shining my uniform light source and by uniform I mean that it shines in equal, in equal intensities you can say or equal directions in every which way. And what would happen when it comes through when it comes through the slits? Well what would happen is that through the slits I would observe that light comes out and actually what I would see what I would see is that what light would interfere in these in these places much like it would interfere at the points in which we had our ripples just from the last video we had two rocks put in a pool and we had ripples around it we can actually see that light or the light that waves that waves interacted at some point and at some points then cancelled out and at some points they added up to a bigger wave so how would I see light adding up or light canceling out where it just so happens that we had this we had this pattern forming this pattern and we have an interference pattern how do we know that we have an interference pattern well it's really really simple if we look at the screen we'll see points that have light on them and we'll see points in between them that are dark points they're dark spots and if you're wondering hey can I shine a light through two slits and I will see dark spots? The answer is yes, you will see dark spots. And why will you see dark spots? Well, we already said that just like uh, waves in a pond, any wave can cancel out or add up. And where these, where these two wave sources add up, we will see a bright spot. You will see a bright spot. So this is constructive. This is constructive interference. And when we see dark spots, this would be these two sources of waves canceling out. So this would be destructive destructive interference. And when Thomas Young actually did this, he noticed that he actually saw he actually saw dark spots and bright spots, one other the other. And this clued him into understanding that this has to be an interference pattern. So we need to understand that there is such thing as an interference pattern. Interference pattern. This is also called an interference fringe. Interference fringes. Very good. So we see constructive and destructive interference, so light is definitely a wave. So whenever you hear the double slit experiment, it should clue you into the wave property of light. Wave property of light. Very good. So along came another dude called, a way we should know him, or right before we talk about this dude called Einstein, that is going to say, oh wait, light is not really a wave. Before that, we need to understand what properties light has before we try and interpret it as a wave or as, uh, as maybe a particle. Light has frequency because light is a wave. It also is associated with energy. We know that there is UV light that, can, uh, that come from the sun and they can cause some, uh, some damage to our skin and then we know that x-rays have way more, uh, they're way more powerful and maybe, uh, maybe radio waves are less powerful. So there's energy associated with it and there's intensity. And students often mix the two. They say energy, more energetic, maybe it means that it's more intense. And it's actually not related. Those two are not related. And we're going to actually try and understand it. Frequency is, is something that is associated with light, just like it is associated with any sound. It's just the frequency of the wave. And what we're saying by frequency is when we're taking visible light, we can say blue has a certain frequency, and the red color has a different frequency. 
And what we need to know is that each frequency is associated with energy. These two are linked. And what do I mean by that? The higher the frequency, the higher the frequency, the higher the, hi the uh, higher the energy. I'm just going to do it in capital E. The higher the energy. And I slightly touched on it, but what we need to know is that the bluer light, the, blu the bluer lights are going to have more energy, more energy, whereas the red lights are going to have less energy. And that means that the more I shift myself towards the blue, and being that I didn't copy down this whole electromagnetic spectrum, we need to understand that if I have blue colors, red colors here, on this side we would have the radio waves, the radio waves on this side, and on this side we will have the x-rays, just for example. And the more I go towards these frequencies, the more energy I have. And it just so happens that you can solve for the energy. You can find out what energy is your light associated with by the, this equation. The energy calculated in electron volts units. And if you don't know those, don't worry about it just yet. The energy, you can solve for it if you take the frequency and you multiply it by Planck's constant. Just Planck's constant. Very good. So if I have my frequency, I know what my energy is. And just by looking at this equation, if my frequency goes up, my energy would also necessarily go up. So this is good. We know that frequency and energy are closely related. So what is, what is this whole intensity thing? What, what is this whole intensity thing? Well, it just so happens that there are little particles that we're going to discuss, little light particles that are called photons. Photons. And let's just say I have a window here. This is my window. And there's light coming in through the window. Let's just say there's blue light for some reason coming in through the window on this side. And then maybe later there's some, uh, there's some red light. Maybe there's some red light coming in through the window on this side as well. This is not an arrow. This is, there we go. This looks more like an arrow. And these little photons, these little photons, or I can say photons of blue light, are here in this, are here in this little arrow. And I see that I've drawn one, two, three, four, five. I have five photons. I have five photons. And this is a little bit more complicated, so this is just simplifying. I have five photons here, and I have maybe five photons here as well. One, two, three, four, five. By this definition, it's five photons. By this definition, these, these light beams, you can say, would have the same intensity. And you already know that by intensity, maybe I mean the density. I can say the photon photon density. So when I'm saying intense light, it is very photon rich. All these little photon light particles, I will see a lot of them. So let's take another example and see if we can have we can have high energy light. Let's just say I have high energy light. Let's just say I have blue light. High energy light. It's going that way. And I have another red light, which is less energetic. And I'm going to take this this uh, this light right here and I'm going to let's maybe put maybe put four photons in it, and in the red light maybe I'm going to put five or six or seven. Let's see, uh, let's see what we have here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven photons here, and I have four photons here, four photons here. So this would mean that the red light is more photon dense. It's more photon dense, so this is going to be more intense. This is going to be less intense. Although this is a more high energy uh, wave, or these are more high energy photons, they, this, this light beam has less photons in it, so it's less intense. So when I'm saying very intense light, I mean that it's very photon rich or very photon dense. And you can see that lower energy waves or lower energy light can have more intensity associated with it because it has more photons. So when I'm saying that I have uh, red light and blue light, they can be of different energies, but they can also be of different intensities. They can also be of different intensities. So what we need to understand is that intensity does not, does not necessarily correlate to energy at all. These are two different things altogether. Very good. So we're going to move on and talk about that little dude called Einstein. Called Einstein. And he said, well, look at what I found. And he, and he probably... Uh, he probably rocked the world a little bit with this, and he got the Nobel Prize for this. So let's see what he found out. Einstein took a potassium plate, which we know can be easily ionized. And if you're, if you're not familiar with this form, ionized. Ionized basically means that I have my atom, and I have electrons orbiting it. 
electrons orbiting it. If through some some way I can I can transfer energy and cause this electron to shoot out, then my then my atom is going to have one less electron. It's going to miss an electron, so it's going to be an ion. And this is this process is called ionization. Ionization. So what we know is that potassium can be easily ionized. It is a it is an alkali earth metal, so it can be easily ionized. So we put it here and we plug it into into an ammeter. But well, this can actually measure current. So if for some reason, if for some reason electrons are going to be electrons are going to be moving here, I'll be able to read it. And what do I need it for? What do I really need it for? Well, what Einstein did is he shone a red light on this potassium plate, and it just so happens that it didn't read any current at all. Well, basically this red light did not have any effect on it. And then he lit green light on it, and then he suddenly started measuring current here. There was suddenly current here. And this really means that electrons are being actually moving. They're, they're being actually moved, rather, across this line. So we have electron flow. We have ionization. And uh, then he said, oh, let's see if we have, if we can do it with blue light. So he's shown blue light, blue light on this plate, and he also saw current. He also saw electrons being liberated. Well, he didn't see the electrons, obviously, but this current necessarily means that electrons are being moved around. They are being moved around, and this means that there is ionization. And how can we explain this? Well, I'm just going to give you the, uh, the figure right away. In order to ionize this potassium plate, it was calculated that you need to have at least 2.0 electron volts. This is what you need to cause ionization to this material. And being that we know that frequencies correlate with energies, we can solve and we can understand that the frequency for red light that he used was 1.77 electron volts, which isn't enough, which isn't enough to cause ionization. So I can shine red light as much as I want, and it's not going to cause ionization. The green light was calculated to have 2.25 electron volts, which is more than enough. And the blue light was even calculated to have more. It was calculated to have 3.1 electron volts. And that really means that these, these two frequencies of light have enough energy associated with them to cause electrons to be ejected out of the material, to cause electrons to be ejected out of the material. And this is quite interesting. This is actually quite interesting. And if you think about it, uh, we talked about waves to being some sort of, of disturbance, disturbance that propagates. It propagates. That means that mat matter is not being transported. We discussed it. If I have a rope here and I cause a wave, it's not that particles from this side move to this side. That's not the case. But here we actually see particles that are being ejected out of the material. They are being moved around. So if particles are being ejected, this is a matter property. So light is shown. Light is shown to have a matter property or a particle-like property. So whenever you hear the photo effect, you can say particle, particle nature of light. Particle nature of light. And another thing that's important to understand, another thing that's important to understand, is I have some current that I measure here. Let's just say I have some green light here, and I can measure current here. The question is, when would I measure more current? When would I measure more current? If I increase the frequency of light, or if I increase its intensity? Well, I'm going to give you a clue. Each photon, each photon, can ideally, let's just say for our sakes, can eject one electron, one electron. So if each photon can eject one electron, and the more current I will measure here is basically more electrons that I have, really what I want is to have my light, if I want more current to be measured here, what I need is a more intense light. And what do I mean by that? If one photon can cause one electron to shoot out, I don't really need a more powerful photon. I don't really need a more powerful photon. What I need is more photons. I need more intensity. I need more intensity. And if I have more photons, then I can have more electrons ejected out. If one can cause each to bounce out, I have more electrons bouncing out. And I'm going to just draw this on the side. I'm just going to draw this on the side. And this is my potassium plate. This is my potassium plate. And I have, let's just say I have green light here. And it's causing electrons to be liberated out. And it's causing some sort of current to be measured of some sort of current to be measured. And I'm saying I want this current to be higher. This means I want more electrons to be flowing here. 
And in order to have more electrons, I don't need a different frequency of light. I need more photons in this light. So I need to have more intensity. I need to have a more intense light. And this obviously happens when uh, it comes up in an exam where they say in order to measure a higher current, you would need to have higher frequency. And that is, that is incorrect. You would need to have higher intensity. And this is just something I wanted to touch on. And take your time understanding this. You can rewind the video if you want to. And we're going to talk a little bit about intensities and frequencies a lot more in this course. So hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next video.